Hey, what's up? This is Alfa Romeo here. We are back with some more hot takes submitted by you guys. Thank you so much to everyone who commented on YouTube and Instagram for this video. Um, there was such a good response and there were way too many good ones to use in one video. So I've tried to pick the most diverse range of topics that we can so we can talk about a whole bunch of interesting spicy things. Let's go. It's so hard to find a legit store for techwear online. Uh, I think the problem here is maybe you're looking in the wrong places because there are very few legitimate techwear stores because most of the places that brand themselves that way tend to be dropshippers. I think it's far more productive to identify particular brands that you like and then shop for things on that basis or even look at those more mainstream fashion retailers. There are lots of places that I go to, Farfetch, Matches Fashion, End Clothing, Mr. Porter, all kinds of places like that, and all of those will carry a whole range of different interesting brands. Some of those probably won't fit into the techwear, technical fashion kind of space, but some of them will. I've covered loads of brands and pieces over the years as well, so if you want some more inspiration for different things that fit that techwear mold, uh, maybe things that won't come up when you just Google like best techwear or whatever, then uh, have a look back through the archives. Hikercore is extremely overrated. Uh, quite a few people said this. I think there's always, when there's that recontextualization process of something traditionally being very uncool and then people starting to say, actually, no, this is cool now, um, I think that is always going to alienate some people. For some people as well, maybe hiker core or certain hiker core outfits are too firmly rooted in the kind of performance and outdoor space because it feels like the number one concern is the outdoor performance stuff and aesthetics comes later. It's also very different aesthetically to techwear, but it tends to be wrapped up together quite a lot of the time because of that link with performance. So I think if people approach techwear thinking, hey, I really like the look of this stuff, and then they end up seeing hiker core instead as a kind of techwear alternative or something similar to techwear, then I can see how that can be quite off-putting. Honestly, I think it's totally fine to like the techwear stuff and not like the hiker core stuff. They are very different at the end of the day. However, I think this is far from the last that we'll see of hiker core. It seems to only be getting more popular and becoming more mainstream. And personally, I think it's an interesting style to combine with techwear as well, even though the two are quite different. So it's probably something that you'll continue to see on this channel alongside techwear stuff occasionally. You are not going to use those 23 pockets. Firstly, don't underestimate how many snacks I carry on a daily basis. But for real, I think this raises a bigger question of why people buy high performance techwear clothing with loads of features, um, but then don't actually make use of them. Sometimes I'm gonna go out with cargo pants on, I'm not gonna use the cargo pockets. Sometimes I go out and I do use all the cargo pockets. I don't exclusively pick things like, hmm, well today I'm gonna need to carry four different things, so I need exactly four pockets on my outfit. It just doesn't quite work like that. I wear the stuff that I wanna wear, and sometimes that's a little bit overkill in terms of pockets or whatever other features. I think sometimes features are associated with particular looks as well, and if you want that particular look, then the features come along with it. Cargo pockets on pants, of course, being a massive example of that. Or some features sound cooler on paper than they do in practice, like the orc zip, on the J89, for example. I bought that thinking, oh yeah, great, I'll zip that into my acronym jacket or whatever, but in practice, I just found that it's easier to keep them separate. Also, with some of those really full feature jackets like the J1, I think it's totally fine to not make use of all of those features because that jacket is gonna mean different things to different people and everyone is gonna derive different amounts of value from the different things that are on offer. But it's the fact that people can do that, that this one jacket can do so much and be useful in different ways to different people, I think that's part of the appeal. But yeah, sometimes I wear 23 pockets on an outfit when I go to the shops just to feel something. Instagram and TikTok are ruining fashion. This is something that I've heard online quite a lot, um, and social media has certainly massively changed the way that brands market their product and the way that they interact with their customers online. Prestigious brands are doing new kinds of marketing techniques to appeal to users of those platforms. If you look at something like Celine SS21, for example, they're very much taking not only a kind of TikTok aesthetic in the clothing, but also presenting it in quite an informal, almost TikTok-friendly way. From a fashion fan perspective, I certainly 
certainly think there are negative consequences of Instagram and TikTok becoming so popular in the fashion space. I think it encourages overconsumption and that need to feel like you're keeping up with other people or you're buying the right brands to kind of fit in with other people in a subculture. I also think Instagram and TikTok have a big focus towards short form content. So it really prioritizes things which are immediately visually attention grabbing and you can engage with it in a second. And that takes precedence over interesting construction or nuanced design or other things which are maybe hard to appreciate at a glance. However, I also think the rise of these social media platforms has done some really good things for fashion. I think it encourages creativity and experimentation, and that's particularly something that we're seeing in TikTok at the moment with all kinds of transitions and ways of presenting outfits in new ways that aren't just static images or people walking down a runway. I think it's given people a huge access to fashion content that they didn't previously. There's just such a massive database now of different kinds of styles that people can get involved with, or different examples of certain items or certain brands being worn in different ways that you can take inspiration from. It's also created communities of like-minded people to share their interests and dive deeper into those things that they're really passionate about. Kiss heels are overrated. These are the Rick Owens kiss heels. Uh, I think the heels are really cool. I think it's great to see that they've encouraged the breaking down of gender norms and people feeling more empowered to wear different kinds of clothing that maybe they wouldn't do before. However, I feel like quite a few people, whenever they see an outfit with kiss heels, they're like, oh my god, best outfit ever. Yes, king, bless up, 100 emoji, whatever. And I think anything that provokes that kind of a reaction is probably overrated to some degree. Techwear people aren't creative enough in general. A lot of techwear fits rely heavily on certain brands and pieces, making a lot of techwear fits look copy-pasted. This was one of quite a few comments on this topic, with Raining Chump going as far as to say that techwear has regressed to 2016 Nike Lab ACG. Firstly, as Doofy replied, yes, I do think this extends to quite a few fashion subcategories. It's not a problem exclusive to techwear. I think social media has something to do with that. People see the same brands or pieces and feel like those are the gold standard that you have to aspire to. And maybe that leads them more towards purchasing those kinds of products rather than slightly different ones that maybe in a vacuum they would actually prefer. I think there's a feeling that wearing all of the correct brands is the best way to do techwear or is the most techwear. Um, Particularly this pertains to acronym, wearing all acronym is the best that you can be from a techwear perspective. And there are loads of great outfits which are 100% acronym, don't get me wrong, but that does lead, of course, to a lot of fairly similar looking outfits, particularly when there are recent releases like the P31 and the J68, which were a little bit more affordable, had much higher availability, and caused a lot of people to flock to those very particular products, and then within that season you see a whole bunch of people posting very similar outfits with very similar pants and jackets. But also I think the idea that things have to fit a certain criteria in order to be considered true techwear outfits does put people off experimenting to some extent. In general people seem hesitant to mix a highly functional pair of pants with a jacket that maybe doesn't have that same level of functionality. They feel like they have to kind of go all or nothing and I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think as well because techwear products, especially at that high end, do tend to be pretty expensive when people are looking for those big pickups, I feel like they would rather play it safe, get something that the community really likes and has, you know, lots of coverage on it already, rather than going out on a limb and experimenting with a slightly more unusual brand. As we touched on in last week's video, brands like Craig Green and A Cold Wall are great examples of things which maybe don't have super advanced feature sets or loads of high performance elements to them, but nonetheless fit in with that same aesthetic and still make great clothing at the end of the day. I think the hashtag techwear and walkor space suffers a very similar issue as well, with higher profile content creators all wearing quite similar pants and jackets, often promoting the same dropshippers with codes and stuff like that. Um, and consumers of that content will see that stuff, they'll go all to the same websites, buy all the same things, post their own content, and the cycle continues. I think there is way more room for creativity than what people are currently doing, including myself, and as a community, we should absolutely be encouraging people to take things in different directions and experiment with interesting brands or interesting pieces that the community hasn't really seen before. Buying clothes from a charity shop or thrift store just to sell on is kinda messed up. Um, I've seen this practice grow more and more common in the last couple of years. Um, people going around these different charity shops, 
picking up basically anything they can get their hands on that might look remotely interesting or valuable, and then flipping it online at a pretty significant markup. On the one hand, I guess you could make an argument that, well, they're giving money to charity, they're putting more money in the charity's pocket by doing that, but I definitely think there's a kind of gentrification argument to be made there. It's potentially depriving other people of that clothing in the process, and potentially they're people that need that stuff more than you do. This is a very complex socio-economic issue that I think is too complex to cover in a sort of one minute reply to something. But I'd say, as with a lot of things, moderation is key. I think if you're going to a local charity shop and buying some stuff you think is cool, maybe some of it you end up selling in the future. Obviously, no problem doing that, but yeah, those people that are really buying up tens and tens of garments to then kind of flip them at like four times the price they bought them on Depop or whatever, mm. That feels a bit dirty to me. Gore-Tex delamination is a serious problem. A thousand dollar pieces shouldn't fall apart in a few years. Um, yeah, that is true. Gore-Tex does have a shelf life, which really sucks if you're buying an expensive jacket because yeah, it isn't going to last literally forever. However, if well looked after, you will definitely get good long-term use out of these things. I've got Gore-Tex jackets back there that I've owned for five plus years now, and they have no signs of DLAM whatsoever. And I've seen plenty of much older jackets than that online as well, which again are still in perfect condition. So yes, it's true. Gore-Tex does have a lifespan, it won't last forever, but I also don't think it's the kind of ticking time bomb that some people seem to think it is. Techwear will always suffer from copycat dropshippers, fast fashion, and an overall uniformity in design because small name designers don't have access to the materials required to produce Techwear. This is a great point in that materials like Gore-Tex and Shoulder Dry Skin not only have high minimum order quantities, but also will restrict the people that can buy that stuff in the first place. So if you are a very small brand, brand, then tough luck, you're not going to be able to use Gore-Tex. However, I don't think that necessarily excuses copycat designs. Being restricted on materials doesn't mean that you need to replicate more expensive clothing in order to grow your brand. I think it's more likely that copycat brands and dropshippers and such exist to cater for a market that want the look of those expensive products, but quite reasonably don't want to pay those very high costs associated with them. And sacrificing the material quality and the material performance is one of the ways of bringing the price of those products down. And for the brands doing so, it's easier to copy those products and those aesthetics than it is to come up with their own innovations. Techwear is not as accessible to women as it is for men, particularly cheaper techwear. Um, this is definitely true in that many high-profile techwear brands don't have specific clothes for women. However, I think this problem is actually greater at the expensive end of things rather than the cheaper end. Because the women's athleisure market is absolutely massive. Brands like Nike, Lululemon, Under Armour, lots of those guys will have high-performance clothing which is specifically designed for women and will, to an extent, have a kind of futuristic or an interesting technical look. Similarly, more mainstream outerwear brands do cater to to women, brands like Arcteryx, although that is arguably a more expensive brand, they have shells cut just for women, and you'll find that's the case with quite a few outerwear brands as well. But for specific techwear brands, there aren't really that many options. Valence very recently released their first collection for women, and it seemed quite popular in that things sold out quite quickly, although my understanding is that this was something of an experiment from Valence, and the quantities that these things were made in were actually relatively low. Enfant Levy released a pretty cool women's collection last season, and many of those pieces I think were more interesting than the men's stuff, but that is mostly it. You could argue that a lot of products in this space are unisex to a certain degree, that is true, but I do think women in this space have to work harder to find clothing that's appropriate for them, and I'd love to see more attention paid to women's stuff and more women feeling empowered to try out this style of fashion. Or those who focus on the more cyberpunk cosplay side under hashtag techwear to feel like there are fashion brands brands that cater to them as well. I hate how techwear has started being called Warcore. I absolutely despise that name. I feel like it glorifies war, especially when people pose with guns and stuff. Firstly, I'd consider at best Warcore to be a separate 
but related style of fashion to techwear. People started using the word walkwear more to differentiate things which previously were being called techwear, but maybe didn't fit the same criteria as techwear fashion. But people interested in that kind of style definitely need to be conscious of the military influences, and aside from the people who take the view that I'm creating sort of cyberpunk cosplay type outfits, if you're posing with guns and swords and stuff like that, I think it's quite hard to argue that you're not in some way glorifying war. So much of techwear and fashion generally is influenced by military clothing, but I definitely think that it's possible to operate in this kind of space without making your outfit look like military clothing. Not everything has to be covered in molly webbing and knee pads, and I'd also say take a look at more colourful examples of this kind of clothing, because that's a very quick way to break that association with military if you're mixing that colour palette up. I also think balancing more military-influenced ones with less tactical looking things is a very good way to achieve that balance of having a high performance technical looking outfit without looking like you're just glamorizing clothing designed to kill people. Those were your best, your hottest, my favorite fashion and tech wear takes. Again, thank you so much to everyone who submitted these. It is much appreciated. Obviously, I couldn't do this video without you guys doing that, so uh, it is much appreciated. And uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to doing something along these lines. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. It is much appreciated. Um, it's a good signal to me to kind of, what sort of video shall I do more of? What ones do people enjoy the most? So yeah, vote with your little fingers. And um, that's everything from me. So thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week with another video. This one's being recorded before the last video is out, so I can't do shout outs this week, unfortunately. But thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to see some more, there's going to be links going up at the top. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely consider doing so because we've got more fashion content coming out every single week. I've been teasing some tech wear pickup type things for a while, and those are probably going to be coming next. So keep an eye out for those. But until then, we'll see you later.